Hey, welcome back to Growing with a Beard. I appreciate you guys tuning in over my past videos that I've had. I've enjoyed talking about the elements, about all my amendments, and all that fun stuff. Today, I kind of want to branch away and talk about environment. Why is your environment so important? Uh, now, working at a grow store, I get lots of questions all the time. The problem is you, you start to see a lot of YouTube videos with all these people with great success, and they do have great success. And I get a lot of questions is, why am, is my yields or my plants not looking like theirs? I always ask a couple of simple questions in the very beginning. Like number one, I always ask is what your temperature level is at. You know, temperature does apply an important role, and it also depends on what kind of light that you're using. So HPS, old school lights where I'm seeing them slowly fade away, but what an HPS does, they give off so much heat that they will naturally warm up the leaf temperature of your plants. Uh, so let's say you know, you're running it at you know, 75, 78 degrees. Well, in reality, your leaf temperature is actually probably 81, 82. So that's why on a high pressure sodium side, you're trying to keep that temperature levels between you know, 75 to 78 degrees. Uh, what happens, as you get too hot in there, it's just like your grass is growing outside. You know, you start getting into summertime, it gets 90 to 100 degrees. Now your grass might be green, but it's growing at a very slower rate. So the same thing is going to happen with any kind of cannabis plants indoors is the hotter it gets, the slower the growth that you're going to get. Now, H or, um, HPS versus LED. Now on the LED side, now LEDs are a lot cooler. They are a lot more efficient, but they're also not giving off that heat like the high pressure sodiums do. So in a gross space, whether it's a tent, whether it's a larger area, you're trying to hit those higher numbers between like 78 to about 82 degrees. So instead of that light on the HPS naturally warming up your leaf canopy, you're going to want to increase it on the LED side. Now that's going to help them go through that photosynthesis just because the, that leaf temperature isn't where it is on an HPS. So that's one thing I have noticed is that I have to run my LEDs at a little bit higher. Even if it comes to that point where you got to close up a tent or you might have to add a little supplemental heat or the more lights that you get, that's going to help maintain that temperature. But that's the key temperature that you're wanting to focus at, 78 to 82 on an LED side. Now, the next thing I like to ask is, what's your humidity levels? You know, humidity does play an important role, um, even in vegetative growth. Now, I can get a little higher, you know, even if I'm at 50, 55 percent on a vegetative side, that's fine because you're really not worried about uh, on your flowers. Because the flowers, the higher humidity, you have a higher chance of what's called botrytis or it's bud rot. Like inside of those flowers, literally, it, you'll get mold. It's just because there's so much moisture in there at that high humidity levels, that's what's going to create that botrytis or that bud rot. So idea humidity range, if you can keep between 40 to 50 percent during veg and through flower, and if you can get down to 40 percent in late flower, you're going to have a better harvest and you're going to help to avoid getting that bud rot that's inside of those flowers that you're not really going to want to consume anyways. Um, next thing I like to ask is CO2. Are you running CO2 or are you not? CO2 plays an important factor in getting those large fruits and flowers that you're looking for. Um, and an idea, if you looked at a bar graph, at the very top line, 1500 parts per million are the most CO2 that your plants can take up, period. You start getting over 1500, that's when you start to see suffocating because you put too much CO2 in there and not enough oxygen. Obviously, they're not taking up oxygen through their plants, they're more taking up that CO2 to go through their photosynthesis process. So, in ambient CO2 temperature or CO2 ppm's, we're looking at maybe 250 to 300. I've seen it slowly rise over the past five, six years, but it hasn't been by much. We're looking at maybe 50 parts per million. So if you just walk outside or your natural air that's in your room, it's usually between 250 and 300 parts per million which is fine, it's enough to get through that photosynthesis, but it's not gonna get those big, solid, larger fruits and flowers that you're really looking for. Now there's ways of adding CO2 to your room. There's different uh, grow bags, like the exhale bags, which is basically a mycelium. And as it's going through and changing, the mycelium's taking over, its byproduct is CO2. Now those things will, depending on which one you are and what size garden you're in, is going to, determine how much CO2 is actually in there. Some of those larger bags, you can get them up to, you know, six to 800 ppm's, 
and it's always about keeping that environment sealed because CO2 will escape. I know a lot of people that like to run the CO2 tanks, which are awesome, but you need a regulator, you need a controller to keep that CO2 levels where you're wanting at. Because ideally, you're shooting for 1500, which is hard to get and maintain if you're not in some kind of commercial atmosphere. But any kind of CO2 that is going to help increase those yields. And like I was saying, CO2, that's I wouldn't say key because you can grow plants, you can have good yields without adding CO2, but the more CO2 that you add, that's what's going to get those yields that you start to see in like those High Times magazines, you start to see good growers online. CO2 is what they're using to really get that there. Um, Airflow, air circulation is another one. You want to turn over that air that's in there. Because you got to think, as your plants are metabolizing and taking in that CO2 that's there, they're also releasing oxygen. So over time, they're going to take up all that CO2 that's in that room, and you're left with nothing but oxygen. So you're really not going to have that CO2 left. So ideally, you want to turn that air over, you know, every hour to two hours, fresh air. So I like to have constant flow of air going in there. I, I, I like to put a fan into the top of my t uh, tent so that way you're pulling in all that air because also CO2 is heavier than oxygen. So if you're bringing in fresh air, you're bringing it to the top of your tent, that CO2 is going to fall down onto your canopy space, have a fan in the bottom that's pulling that air out. So you've got a constant flow inside of your tent. Now, obviously in a commercial atmosphere it's going to be a lot different. It'll be set up a lot different because then you're starting to work with uh, AC units and all kinds of other fun stuff. But just just as a personal grow, you know, one fan in the top, one in the bottom. Um, sometimes you can get away with those, uh, like a duct booster fan that's pushing maybe 85 to 110 CFMs. Now your CFMs, that's the airflow rating. That's how your four inches, your six inches, and eight inches. Obviously, the bigger size you have, there's more airflow going in there. Which I'll talk about that in a later episode. I really want to get into air filtration and uh, using carbon filters and things like that. But just to hit those high points let's you know get that air turned over because you're going to have more co2 in there happier healthier plants um I should have went back when I was just, you've got just small little things like this. You know, this is just a hygrometer. This is going to measure temperature, humidity that will help, you know, at least you can look at this like, hey, I can adjust it from here. Uh, they make temperature controllers too. They make great big ones that have everything, temperature, humidity, CO2, all that stuff in there. It just depends on how in depth you want to put into this to keep your temperature, your environment exactly where you want it to be. Now, one other thing that it's curious to me, I'm, from my research, I feel like it matters. Now, I know a lot of growers are coming out of Colorado. Colorado is at a higher elevation. I actually had a customer talking to me the other day that they did a side-by-side -side grow with the exact same genetics, the same temperatures, the same environment to a T, and the product that was grown in Colorado versus something that was grown in Virginia is completely different product. But I mean, same genetics, same phenotype, same everything. And we got to talking and you know trying to figure out what the idea was. One thing I asked him, I was like, "Are you know, is, are you out in Colorado? Because you're going to have a higher elevation." So we got to talk, and he's like, "You know what? That's probably what my issue is." Now, one thing that I found in my research is at a higher elevation, um, you're actually going to have more CO2. So lower elevation, there's more less CO2 available, more oxygen. There's higher amounts of CO2 at a higher elevation, which you're creating higher air pressure. So somehow, you know, if these genetics were bred at a higher elevation and then you start growing you know lower west coast what lower east coast you're going to have that difference so i feel like that is going to somehow affect the way that that plant's growing you know maybe you're getting 25 percent less yields it might even be a 10 percent less of yields but i feel like that elevation really has something to do so if you're growing and you see these guys that are out there and you're not hitting the numbers that they are but your environment is there my guess is it's most likely an elevation elevation or an air pressure issue now, I know I flew over a lot of stuff really, really fast, but again, you know, environment matters. You know, temperature, humidity, air circulation, airflow, all of those are important. Now, like I said, CO2 is very important, but you can still get yields and still get good plants as long as you're turning over that airflow. Now, you will see an increase, usually a 10 to a 15% increase in yields from using CO2 and trying to hit those marks. You know, uh, used to when I did, I, I used to try to hit 1250. 1250 was a good enough, especially when you're starting to run CO2 tanks. Uh, you go through a tank a week is what you were going through, but you could definitely see a large increase in those fruits and flowers towards the end. 
Now, one thing that I really haven't hit on real hard is outdoor grows. Outdoors are tough. Uh, you're always dealing with the environment, the elements, everything, pests. So there's not really great advice I can give you for outdoors because every scenario is going to be different, but it's trying to find that right spot that you're getting the most sunlight. You know, it's not like you can really add CO2 to an outdoor grow, but it's trying to evade any kind of pests. You know, plant deterrents or, or use some kind of pesticides to stay on there. That's one thing that I have noticed about an outdoor grow is you're going to get more pests hands down than anything indoors. So outdoors, pick that right location. Find you that right spot that you're getting the most sunlight sunlight that you can keep these plants nice and happy and healthy. We'll, I'll go over an outdoor grow. I'm, I might do one this season or I might do one next year, but that way you can see, I mean, you're always running into some kind of issues. As much as I hate to say it, and I wish it was a perfect world life there, but you're going to run into issues. So one thing I've known, pest control. That's the number one thing on an outdoor grow is just stay on top of any kind of your pests. Well, I enjoyed talking about a little something different besides just my amendments and my elements today. Hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of why your environment is so important on an indoor grow and to have that success and the yields that you're really looking for. Well, tune in next time. I find something else that's fun and exciting to talk to you about. So y'all have a good one.